Hey everyone, we've got some exciting news to share. First off, thank you for all the love you've shown us so far. It's been incredible to see and hear your comments. And many of you have told us you want more. So we're launching a Patreon channel where you'll get access to uncut episodes, bonus content, and a lot more. Check out the link to Patreon in the description below and we'll keep the entertainment coming. So, Producer Erica, uh, what do we got next? So, this is the part of the show where we review your posts on social media, and uh, we determine if it's true or false. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, I'm going to oh, go right. shoot. Dominic, Lieutenant Reed. Mm. Uh, first question. Maybe it was just me, but my first run-through of Enterprise left me baffled, and Malcolm Reed was the center of my confusion. Ouch. <laughs> What do you think, true or false? Ah, uh, I, you know, I'm going to go with true. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I win? Yeah. Ah, so get... mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they, uh, I, I think I read that once back in the day. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I hired a private detective, tracked her down and shot her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring it on. All right, my turn for you, sir. Um, I always liked the Tucker character and thought his emotionalism, both the soft and the hard, was refreshing and welcome. Oh, that's very true. You know, you're absolutely right. <sighs> yeah. What that say that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> but slower. All right, Mal All right, number two. Malcolm, <laughs> at least to me, read as a tightly wound, closeted character, and I was excited with the hope that Star Trek finally created their first gay oh, character. Oh, that's true, 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 true. Right. Yeah. I think there's even a website. It's called womenatwarp.com. Yeah. That all came from the uh, the three-line bio that they put out. Um, I remember reading this when I went to uh, what we used to call the Mayfair Market, Gelson's now, mm -hmm. uh, and we were on the stand as I was waiting to check out. So there we were on the TV guide. I pulled that out. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was reading the, you know, the blurb about us. Then Dominic Keating, the British actor, will be joining the cast. Turn to page 56. Apparently the first gay character on Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly dropped my sushi. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they were, they were all up in arms. Um, the button-down Brit, uh, shy around women, was the, uh, that was the buzzer for everyone. Was that your only description when you made the audition? Yeah. I mean, literally, it was a button-down, stiff upper lipped Brit, shy around women. And I went, fuck, I've got to act that. <laughs> <laughs> no more wet sponge, wet, just some, some like tough guy stuff. All right, right get this one. Yeah, great. Connor Trenier sucks. <laughs> By the way, Trenier was spelled T-R-I-N-E-A-R. -E Love that. Connor yeah. Trenier sucks. Producers would like to note that both Connor and Trenier were spelled wrong. <laughs> uh, that, that's ridiculous. That's fake. <laughs> that is fake, but it's bloody funny. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Hard to look at. Um, no, it's, you know, I mean, I haven't seen this in... So I haven't seen any of this since we did that. I watch this episode all the time. <laughs> I mean, we did think of ourselves as being quite a good-looking cast, didn't we? Well, Dom, you clearly know your fan base better than I know mine. Um, I have some words for mine. Uh, Producer Erica, what do we got going next? So we're going to watch a funny episode from season uh, one. It's episode five, Unexpected. Oh, yes. You remember this? No, it's one of the best. <laughs> they did. Yeah, I was... I enjoyed it. I was pregnant in the episode. And at the time, I was told that second only to Scott Bakula, I was the, the second man to be pregnant on um, network television. Oh, it's a hackney storyline in just about everything now. Well, Law yeah, and exactly. Order's done it. <laughs> Anybody can be Several pregnant. Several CSIs have done <laughs> So let's take a look you see at this. Mm -mm. You know, when I got the script, I, I wanted to be very certain that I was um, doing this right as best that I could. And, and I, in fact, had some things changed in the script so that I was going through some of the stages that I 
imagined a woman would go through. Not that I know, ladies. Not that I know. I don't know. <laughs> don't. I don't know. But I'm trying. She was all snarky about the whole thing. To Paul? Yeah. Uh, I mean... Uh, no, to Paul. To Paul or jo- Jolene? Jolene thought it was hysterical. Yeah. Well, we all kind of did at the time, I seem to remember. There I am, fixing the engine. I love that. Look at that. All that flashing light stuff. And it was ultimately a, a, a sort of 70s tennis club disco, you know, oil lamp at the back. Do you remember? It, it, yeah, it was like press board with a few I'd take gels. people when they come to visit the set and they'd come into that set and they'd go, ooh, and I'd go, yeah, come follow me. <laughs> come look at this. You want to see some smoke <laughs> There's your warp drive. Right. I will say that I really um, preferred the red camera because, as we all know, I, I wasn't the best with my lines. And we could yeah. just keep going. <laughs> no, don't say cut. Don't just say cut. Kid. Don't say cut. I'll get it. I'm amazed at how much they mucked with Jolene's wig. Oh, that was... Uh, I mean, you know, we were talking about Kerry McCluggage earlier. I mean, it was affectionately nicknamed after coming out of his office's hair trek. Because that's because all they really cared about. There I am, standing the god, next to you. With the goddamn hair. Uh, they didn't like Scott's hair. They thought he looked like an accountant in this season one. Then he went to the sort of, you know, Caesar, you know, trendy Caesar right. cut by season two. Yeah, it was hair track. I had highlights. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd walk into the... Every couple of weeks, the hair and makeup foiled trailer, up. and he'd be sitting there <laughs> like a... There I am, standing with yeah. no place. Yeah. You're lucky I let you get that close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't like Jolene's hair either. They never said a damn thing about Martin. God no. bless. No. I arrived on set as is. Do you remember that con? Was it, st- it was in uh, Vegas, wasn't it? When uh, Arthur, the, the Australian drag queen who was in civvies, came up and asked if you'd ever wondered what happened to the athlete knickers you wore in episode three, season one. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no. And uh, eventually he goes, yeah, well, I'm wearing them. <laughs> and he dropped trow and, and showed. And he dropped trow. And sure as shit, he was. I got That's his awesome. ass up on stage fast. And you can say Jack Flash. I signed it with the back of a, with the black Sharpie. Dominic Keating was here. <laughs> <laughs> a bubble and squeak, as we call them. See, this is the whole British. What is that? Bubble and squeak rhymes with Greek. Bubble and squeak oh, is, a, is, a, is a savory dish. Um, it's it's like Yorkshire pudding mix with uh, sausages in it, and uh, you put it in the oven and it bubbles and squeaks when it's ready to go. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It's delicious. When I got the job, apparently one of the things that wowed them was when I was staring at the transporter in the room and watching things appear. It was like it was actually happening. <laughs> And of course, when I was auditioning for the job, they thought I didn't show enough awe. Uh huh. Yeah. And we never I did. Could, no, I couldn't. We all, I mean, honestly, even by season four, we're like, he's so aweless. <laughs> aweless. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, all the time. Uh, yeah, our editor's name is Tran, and I want to let him know that that's the, the cut. Oh, say it now. So, Shran, that's the one we're going to use. Yeah. <laughs> that's confusing because Shran obviously is uh, obviously, is yeah. blue. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! What the? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to remind you guys that I'm not in your ears? It's yeah. all, it's all no, we can stop and start. Anybody, yeah. feel free to stop or start. We'll, yeah. yeah. Please stop. Wait, yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> Before kidding, we start, just kidding. What's just Rick's kidding. camera's name, Kate? Hmm? What's Rick's camera's name? Lewis. It's Rick's camera. Okay. <laughs> uh, a and Rick's. What's What's the commercial? I th- I mean, the one I saw, I did go half into looking, and it was a re- Did you do a recall of it? Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah, it was the only commercial I ever spoke in, oh. and I had to speak German. You oh, spoke well, German. Well, they dubbed me later. <laughs> <laughs> Australia, Cindy Coulston. Also haben wir diese coolen Bonbons erfunden. 13 coole Kräuter in cooler Zitrone Melissa. Wer hat's erfunden? Danger. Die Schweiz. Okay, now. Von Ricola. Amen. Ricola Zitrone Melissa. Natürlich aus der Schweiz und aus 13 Kräutern. Ricola. Yeah, it's got the Zitrone there and a Zitrone there. Is that you? Oh, I see. <laughs> Do they put tattoos on you? Yeah. <laughs> And 
And that was only for Germany. Yeah. Where'd you shoot it? Tarifa, Spain, on the Costa del Sol. Oh, that right. sounds nice. Very cool. Very whiny. Oh, that's nice to see. Ha 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 What to do to die to take it a minute or two to two. The thing is stately hard to say, but harder still to do. The beat is tattoo, but twenty to two, rat it tat And the dragon will come when he hears the drum at a minute or two to two today. A minute or two to two. Wow. That's training. Amidst the mists and coldest frosts, <laughs> with barest wrists and stoutest boasts, he thrusts his fists against the posts and still insists he sees the ghosts. Is that for all the way from, from, from drama school, is it one? That, those were our warm-ups. Right. You still remember them all. Look at that. Me, yeah. Ma, more, yeah, I do. More, I, I do. Me, more, <laughs> <laughs> I remember all of it. <laughs> uh, roll in the seat, how you might like to sit there for a little while and I'll... Mike in front of you. No, these are no good. So many good. ways you can sit. I'll try all four. <laughs> Wait, yes. Am I supposed to wear these on? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Full time? yeah. Proper stuff, mate. Okay. This is not. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be. This is not your back bedroom seat. stuff, mate. Okay. We did. We tried that, and um, we shot at my house for a while. Which in sucks. our knickers. <laughs> <laughs> How's your uh, son? He's good. Jasper's a sophomore in high school. If you can believe that. Is and he is he is all of a sixteen year old. Is he and sleeping now? <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah, you can't get him up. <laughs> yeah, no, he is finally sleeping. It was. Uh, that's so funny. You know, you, as a parent, you wind up forgetting those things until you're reminded of it, and then you're like, "That was okay. five Should goddamn watch. years." Okay. Yeah, where I don't think I got well, really sleep at all. Walking him up those it, stairs. Oh, oh Jesus! Here. Never was in better shape. No, <laughs> just hour after Literally. hour, I'm trudging up and down. Yeah, legs, legs like Arnold. That's right. Uh, we've. I don't know whether we gave too much of the farm away. We'll see. But we've only had guests, and uh, and we haven't even talked about an episode in entirety. You are. Uh, you'll have plenty to talk about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll, if you just by sure episode, you've got ninety nine episodes. Yeah. If 98. you just if you ninety eight. Yeah. If you just went by episodes. I blame Voyager for that, by the way. We've got years and years and years of podcasting to do with this every now and then dropping in an episode. I uh, love you, mate. It's mm. been a joy. Uh, we should go for supper soon. Yeah, we will. Uh, let's yeah. have a couple yeah, of drinks. Yeah. All right. God bless you, mate. That's it. Ah. That was great, guys. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Uh, do you think, uh, just no headphones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe like scoot your chairs. Like, uh, we got, I've got a hard oh, okay. thing here, but I, yeah, I, yeah. there we go. I can do that. I am finally. Awesome. Good job. You said nice. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So call me. Yeah. Yes, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's break bread. Yeah, I'm around. I'm thank you so bread. much. Yeah, really, you. really appreciate it. Uh, where are you warning about these? Uh, Universal. Oh, uh, Universal. What are you doing there? Uh, we filmed my show. Oh, that's mm. good. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Is that on yet? No. Uh, All right, okay. right man. Nice. All right, see you, Bing. The set looked good today, too. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah. Nice vibes. Yeah. Camera cuts. See Mark. I've never quite understood that. Slating. Mm Mm-hmm. Something to do with sound. Sound speed. Yeah. (laughs) It's shit that I don't care about. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Clickety clack. Clickety clack. (laughs) Apparently it makes us look good. I don't know. Oh, and then there's another good story about the hamster when I lied about being able to play the guitar and got the job. Uh-oh. Yeah, oh, my fingers were bleeding on opening night. I had to play Danny Boy. Blo- oh, it's a good story. And you did it? I did it. I, 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 I've never been more scared in my life, mate. The, the drag act was nothing. Oh, God. Well, that's me and my magic. Uh, <laughs> With uh, the soap opera I did. Uh, can you do magic? You had to do magic. Yeah. That's I was right. Like, yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. yeah. Look at that. You're going to make me? Ta da! <laughs> uh, uh, the Edinburgh Festival. Um, that brings. There's a couple of other notables uh, uh, after Screamers. I think one of the, the other plays I did might have been just before Screamers and going up to the festival was um, a play called The Monks Barbarians, uh, which was a fantastic, hard, biting new piece by a guy that had only written radio plays before called Michael Wall. 
he's since passed god bless him it was he died a very young not long after we we completed his play at least he saw it produced uh it was at um initially up in uh manchester at the uh royal exchange which is a fantastic rep theater um it's in the round it's a it's one of it's one of the most fabulous theaters to play a lot of actors that uh, you know start out the, it's one of the stepping stones in uh, back in on my day anyway was to go to the manchester royal exchange um it was a wonderful piece do you remember that story about those two boys that were had up in malaysia for smuggling heroin in the late 80s and they hanged them it was a true story uh, they were both australian boys in real life they actually made a movie about it uh in the 90s and i can't remember what that was called Michael based this play on that story about these two boys and he made one of the lads, this uh, hapless boy, Brian, who came from, you know, council flats in North London. And the story was that his mum had won some trip out of the back of a ladies magazine and he got to go to Malaysia where he meets this also English boy, but a world traveler who's been uh, on the lam, as it were, for many, many years. And this guy, slightly older, more worldly, more Machiavellian, persuades this hapless boy to smuggle some heroin from Malaysia to Australia. So then sell this gear and make a fortune and, you know, look ma, top of the world. And of course, the play opens with them having, they get caught and the play opens with them having just been brought back down to the cells, uh, having been sentenced to death for smuggling drugs. And uh, and it's a, it was a really hard hitting play. Brian opens the whole piece. Uh, he's sitting on his, on the bed. I remember it well, sitting on the top of the bed, lights up a cigarette. <laughs> Well, that's us nicely bollocks, didn't it? <laughs> and it's a, it really is a fantastic piece. And we ran there for several weeks. We got extended with a, uh, it got a lot of notice. And this was, uh, I think this was just before Screamers and the Edinburgh Festival. And we got transferred to the Hampstead Theatre, which is a, a bit of a to-do in London. It's been there since the 50s. Uh, they've moved premises now, but initially it was this weird little prefab theatre but it was one of those, you know, off-Broadway theatres, as it were, in the London scene that did good work. And uh, we got to extend that. We, that play ran for about a year in the end. God bless. And uh, that really got me noticed. And then another notable would be, so around that time, uh, there's another hard-hitting, uh, the Bush Theatre, which is another above-the-pub theatre. That's still there in Shepherd's Bush. And that was Pitchfork Disney. So the guy, Philip Ridley, wrote that. This was his first uh, stage play. He wrote, do you remember the Cray, Tins, Cray Twins film? Do you remember the Cray Twins film with uh, the, the Kemp brothers from Spandau Ballet? Philip wrote that. And uh, he was a wonderful guy, very smart writer. And this was an extraordinary piece, a sort of post-apocalyptic play about this brother and sister living in the basement of some dingy, you know, council flat tenement building, never went out, doors locked. It was very, very, you know, um, weirdly apocalyptic. And it, rather than being drug addicts, they were chocolate heads. And the whole set was just littered with tin foil from, you know, used wrappers of chocolate as they moped around in their dressing gowns with ugh, chocolate lips. And, ugh. and into their lives, one night comes this demonic character, Cosmo Disney, that I played. It was an amazing, amazing piece. Uh, I dyed my hair peroxide blonde for the first time to do that and uh it really was an extraordinary piece that that was the one that really kicked me off and got me you know suddenly i was in a different uh, ballpark that's when john ivory because uh, we i did that with uh, rupert graves was there were three of us in it rupert graves tilly vosborough and myself and uh because rupert was in it and he was a bona fide film star at that stage he'd done a lot of merchant ivory stuff John Ivory, Ishmael Merch, and they all came to see that. You could, it was standing room only for about two months and in a small pub theatre with maybe 60 seats. 
Yeah, it was, uh, I have have to say, that particular play, I got to say, that was one of the, I looked forward every night to go to work. You know, that feeling in in your stomach where you're like, showtime. It gets to four o'clock in the afternoon and it's like, okay, let's get ready. And you uh, you start putting on the... <laughs> and uh, come out and it was such a, a razzmatazz role and uh, so showy. He came, he used to come in in a black Mac, uh, but with this bright white hair, sort of a la Billy Idol. And, he, and then ha- about, I don't know, half an hour into, you know, introducing himself to this strange world with these uh, and he first of all only shows himself to the brother and then all of a sudden he just takes off this black mac and I had this red spangly disco uh, ball jacket with you know bright white lapels and and he does this whole piece it was so much fun I can't tell you in the audience you could hear them literally go (laughs) as as Cosmo revealed himself it was a lot of fun man so yeah, those were hard-hitting plays, and uh, and that got me, you know, through Desmond's, and then uh, and then that contract came to an end, and I'd gone on that trip to come out to the states and met that girl Kelly Coleman, and and then decided to you know give it a shot and and come to the to America and see if I could be a Hollywood actor. So uh, there you have it, people. That's right. Yeah. Really. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Oh, no, 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 no applause, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you for helping, for helping us celebrate 20, 20 years of Star Trek, Trek Enterprise. Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen. Thank, thank you, you, darling. Thank you. thank you, Erica. Thank you, thank you Erica. Thank you.